Hey there, welcome to another edition of Things I Think You Should Know About the Universe. I believe we're up to uh, to number 8 now. And uh, in a previous video we talked about the, uh, the probability and the possibility of uh, life existing on other planets or in other solar systems, basically anywhere uh, other than what we know here on Earth. And uh, in light of that, I figured I'd talk about something similar. Because a lot of people seem to be uh, of the opinion that that was pretty interesting. So. A lot of you might have heard about a program called SETI, S-E-T-I, or the Search for Extraterrestrial Intelligence. Uh, basically, the premise behind SETI is that we point our um, point our uh, antennas and satellites and uh, radio telescopes up at the sky and uh, try to see if we can find any artificial uh, radio signals that are being transmitted from other places in the universe. And no, I mean we haven't found anything, but it's uh, an interesting idea to think about. So. I figured I'd talk about what's a, a little known fact about um, programs like that is that we've, uh, we've actually done the opposite. We've been transmitting things out into space, uh, transmitting broadcasts in hopes that someone's out there listening for, uh, for the same thing pretty much. So uh, There are two that I know about in particular, two transmissions that we're going to talk about in a minute, um, but I figured I'd explain a little bit about how this works um, so you can understand the premise behind it. So If we are going to send a transmission out, in hopes that uh, another intelligent civilization is going to be receiving it, we need to uh, make sure that the transmission that we do send is in a, a universal language. We're not going to send an audio transmission in English or Russian or Chinese or anything like that. It's not going to make any sense to them. Uh, the only universal form of communication that we know of uh, is the only universal science. It's something that we did not make up, we did not invent it, we discovered it, and it's mathematics. And uh, our computers, for instance, store and transmit data in uh, something that we call binary code, which is more or less a series of zeros and ones. Uh, that is the most probable form of universal communication that we can think of is mathematics, transmitting data in a series of zeros and ones in binary code. Uh, it's the most probable way that anyone else out there would be able to decipher uh, a broadcast, any form of communication from us. So this, what we have in front of us right here is a, uh, a very simple example of a a broadcast that could be sent. I don't believe this one's actually ever been sent, but you know, it's just a very simple example of it. So, uh, anything that we have is going to start with a one, so that you know when the transmission is actually beginning. Okay, and this one, big long series of zeros and ones, it goes back and forth over here, um, so we can see all the characters up on the screen. Uh, what is the most probable form uh, of communication that we're going to try to send to someone? Well, a big garbled mess of uh, numbers, the zeros and ones, isn't really going to mean anything to them. Um, the most probable thing that we're going to try to do is to try to send them an image, a two-dimensional image. And we would hope that anyone that receives a transmission can figure that out. So, uh, The way that we need to do that is to design this, uh, this transmission so it has a very specific number of characters. The reason why we need to do that is because any uh, two-dimensional image could have a number of different uh, different resolutions, different sizes. It could be a square, it could be a rectangle, um, it could have different dimensions. So this one in particular is a 209 character transmission, 209 character message. Uh, the only two numbers that uh, you can multiply with one another to make 209 are 19 and 11. This particular message is designed like that so that there are only uh, two possible dimensions that it could take. The image could either be 19 by 11 or 11 by 19. It's the only mathematical possibility. Okay, so if you start with a one, one over here, one zero zero one 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 zero zero zero, you know, start over here, and uh, you make it into a uh, a 19 by 11 image, you get this, which is just a garbled mess of junk. It it's nothing that's distinguishable in any way, shape, or form. However. Uh, seeing as there's a very small amount of possibilities mathematically, the only other one that we have looks like this. And uh, that's pretty familiar. We've, we've all seen that before. So 19 by 11 or 11 by 19. It's that easy if you're uh, an alien sitting out there uh, in the universe somewhere to decipher uh, a simple message that we send you. So using this premise, I believe the first one, the first one that I know of that we sent out, um, was uh, sent from a uh, somewhere in Puerto Rico. It was called the Arecibo Broadcast. 1974 they sent this one out. This one in particular was a 1,679-bit message. And uh, 
this image is a uh, 73 by 23 image. So that's how that works. So it was transmitted over a three minute duration again in 1974 and this is a really low quality low res image. You're not really going to be able to see much over here. Um, it's the best one that I could find on the internet somewhere. Sorry about that. But uh, in this transmission we sent them basically code for uh, numbers from 1 through 10. Uh, simple uh, atoms that we know of. Hydrogen, carbon, that type of thing. Simple molecules that we have here on Earth. DNA, which is the basis of life as we know it. Uh, description of the human. Uh, the human form, the human body, a map of our solar system, and then uh, the only other thing in that was kind of a little bit of elementary uh, information on the telescope that actually sent the message so they knew where it was coming from specifically. So uh, This transmission, the Arecibo broadcast, was sent out to a star cluster way on the edge of the, uh, the Milky Way uh, called M13. And M13 is pretty far. It's about, uh, about 21,000 light years away from us. So we're not going to be hearing back from them anytime soon, even if there's anyone out there listening for this. So we'll talk about just how far that is in a minute. The, um, the other broadcast that I know of was made in 1999 from, uh, from Canada, some physicists up in Canada, I believe in Toronto, uh, sent this one out. It was a, a lot more complicated than the Arecibo broadcast, which is just a simple uh, two-dimensional image like this. I don't know a lot of specifics about the one from Canada, other than the fact that it was a 400,000 character message. And um, that one broadcast over a three-hour period. And it was actually broadcast out to four different target stars that were a lot closer than M13. They range about uh, from about 50 light years to about 70 light years. So just, just how far is that exactly, though? Let us, um, let us take a look over here really quick. This is a uh, photograph of an astronaut from, uh, from space. I think this is actually on the moon. So, we've been to the moon, we know about how far that is. Take a look in the upper right hand corner of this, uh, this image over here. See Earth up here from the moon? See how small that looks? This is the farthest that we've been, that humans have ever traveled, is that far away from Earth. And uh, that's about 250,000 miles away. Which sounds like a lot, but in terms of other distances in space, it's negligible. It's almost nothing. The, uh, the sun, for instance, at light speed it takes light eight minutes to travel from the surface of the sun to the surface of the earth. We're not talking light years, we're talking light minutes. It takes light eight minutes to go from the sun to the earth. Okay? The sun is 93 million miles from, from our planet. Not 250,000 like, like this distance that we're seeing right here. It's 93 million. That's a little shy of 400 times the distance. Okay, again, eight light minutes it takes for the sun to uh, to get there. I did some math out actually. Um, yeah, M13, 21,000 light years away. At light speed, that's 1,379,700,000 trips to the sun. Not not trips to the moon. The, uh, the distance that you just saw over here, that's trips to the sun. And even the, um, the 1999 broadcast that went out to uh, those four different stars, the closest one was 50 light years away. That's still 3,285,000 trips to the sun. Um, we're not going to be hearing back from them anytime soon if there are people out there, uh, you know, listening to these transmissions. So it is still pretty interesting, I think, that we're actually trying to... Uh, do something to make our presence known in the universe, but um, it just kind of gives you a sense of how feeble even our, our best attempts at reaching out into outer space are. It's just so big and so vast. We're just, there's no way. Uh, if we don't uh, wind up letting our technology kill ourselves, we might actually be around maybe in a hundred years to, uh, to hear back from anyone that might be, uh, you know, 50 light years away at these uh, stars that were targeted with the 1999 transmission, so, I don't know, pretty interesting, I thought, just something to think about, and, um, you know, as usual, feel free to send me any messages or comments that you may have, I'll try to make some more of these videos in the, uh, the coming days and weeks, let me know if you have any suggestions, and, uh, you know, feel free to say hello, thank you.